Hi and welcome to this PowerCrest presentation on cable short circuit withstand ratings and how to construct cable damage curves. The topics I'll be covering are cable damage. We're looking at the basics of what is cable damage. Right, secondly, we'll be looking at adiabatic versus non adiabatic heating of a power cable. Then we'll be looking at the general adiabatic temperature rise equation, followed by how to construct cable damage curves, and finally, cable withstand ratings, how to determine these. Okay, let's consider cable damage. Now, current flow in a power cable results in heating of the cable. We have the current flowing, there's resistance in the cable, and so due to the resistance, we have an I squared R loss, and this is um, manifested as a heat loss in the cable. This heat loss, of course, increases with increased current flow and is quantified by the following equation. E is equal to I squared RT, right? Where E is, of course, the energy dissipated, R, the cable resistance, I is your current flow, and T is the duration of current flow. So under normal load conditions, a correctly specified cable will have the heat generated being equal to the heat dissipated. So there is no net temperature rise of the cable. Of course, realistically speaking, one could expect a little bit of a fluctuation in the cable temperature as the ambient conditions vary or as the load rises and falls. But in general, um, the net loss or gain of heat is approximately zero. Under fault conditions though, the cable heats up due to heat loss being less than the heat input, right? The heat input being directly proportional to the large fault current flowing now. So there is a maximum temperature the cable is allowed to reach beyond which damage of the cable materials starts to occur. For XLPE and EPR cables, this temperature limit is 250 degrees. For PVC insulated cables, the temperature limit is 160 degrees. Okay, now let's look at adiabatic versus non-adiabatic heating. With adiabatic heating, there is no heat loss from the cable to the surroundings for the duration of the fault. With non-adiabatic heating, there is allowance made for heat loss from the cables to the surroundings for duration of the fault. Okay. So in reality, heating of the cable during fault conditions is actually non-adiabatic. However, adiabatic heating is assumed as this leads to more conservative cable short circuit withstand ratings. Furthermore, note that the amount of energy that a cable can absorb is determined by the cable materials, initial and final temperature. Right, what I mean by a cable can absorb is the amount of heat energy that a cable can absorb without actually being damaged. For purposes of this discussion, an initial temperature of 90 degrees is assumed. Okay, so now looking at the heat rise equation. Now the general adiabatic temperature rise equation for cable heating is E is equal to the fault current squared times time, which is equal to K squared times S squared, right? That's equation one. And we have that the energy is given by E. IF is your symmetrical fault current. T is the duration of the fault current. K is your constant, depending on cable material, initial and final temperature. And S is the conductor size in millimeters squared. Right, how to construct the cable damage curve? Well, from equation one, the cable damage curves may be constructed. This is done using the general adiabatic heat rise equation, which I, um, which I presented earlier, right? E is known for a given cable because we know what K and S is. So the T versus IF damage curves may be derived for a given S, right? We can rearrange equation one to make T the subject of the formula. So we get T is equal to um, K squared times S squared divided by 
if squared. Okay, so here we have a set of cable damage curves over here. Right. Now, how are these useful? Well, let's consider this green curve over here, which is the curve for a 10 milli squared, 10 millimeter squared cable. Right. So, let's say my fault current is 2,000 amps. So I come to the 2,000 amp point on the horizontal axis. I travel up to my curve. When I hit the curve, I travel across. To the time axis and I see I'm about 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or oh, just about 0 0.5, right? But to be on the safe side, I'd say 0 0.5 seconds. So a 10 milli squared, a 10 millimeter squared cable can handle a 2000 amp fault current for about 0 0.5 seconds. Another way these um, damage curves are very useful is when we do our protection coordination studies to ensure that the protection device which protects the cable that the actual trip current curve for the protection device lies below the cable damage curve with a sufficient margin of safety okay please note the following this heat rise equation is only valid for the time period from 0 0.1 second to 5 seconds, right? For, for times less than 0.1 second, the DC offset in the fault current cannot be ignored and has to be factored into the heat rise equation. However, this is hardly ever done as cable ratings less than 0 0.1 second is rarely considered. The value of K used here is 143, right? Based on initial temperature of 90 degrees a final temperature of 250 degrees and a copper conductor. Right, now let's look at cable with stand ratings. Equation 1 may again be used to determine for a given time and a given cable size what is its withstand current, i.e. we make the fault current the subject of the formula. Right, as such, we have now equation 3. And so, we can construct the withstand table by um, using this equation 3. So for various different times, here I've used 1, 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 seconds. And for all the various cable sizes, I've determined what are the withstand currents for these various cable sizes for a given time. Okay, so for example, from table 1 I have that a 35 millimeter squared cable has a one second withstand rating of about 5 ka and a 0.25 second withstand rating of around 10 ka. Please note that this table is based also on an initial temperature of 90 degrees. So if I use an initial temperature of say 45 degrees, then the withstand currents um, of course would be larger. Okay, that is the end. I do hope you've enjoyed this PowerCrest presentation on cable damage, cable withstand ratings, cable damage curves. Please do subscribe, share, like, and comment. And uh, I'd like to invite you to visit my website at www.powercrest.net as well. Thank you, and until next time.